Greetings everyone and welcome back to Lucas Brews. In today's video we're going to have a little go at building the Revell 172nd scale de Havilland Sea Vixen. Uh, now I previously did an unboxing video of this one uh, so uh, if you want to go check that out on the channel but uh, otherwise I'll be doing this one and I'll be using a couple of custom decals or decals from the stash I suppose to make uh, XJ490 which is the Sea Vixen at the Queensland Air Museum where I volunteer. So um, without further ado let's get into it. After giving all the sprues a good wash in some warm soapy water to get any oils and residue off to allow the paint to stick, I then started assembling the cockpit. The cockpit was made up of some seats, the joystick, and a few instrument panels with some nice little details. I used a nail file to clean some of the excess sprue off, and then glued the parts together using the Revell contactor cement. Overall, the fit of the cockpit was really good, and there were some nice little details. One extra thing I added was some copper wire I bent into a hoop shape and then super glued to the top of the headrests to simulate the ejection handles for the seats, which were not moulded in. Overall, however, the seats had some very nice details, including some moulded seat belts, which were a nice touch. I glued the air intakes together before cutting out the fuselage halves and giving them a little bit of a clean with a knife and nail file before moving on to painting the cockpit. I painted the cockpit overall in two coats of Tamiya XF1 flat black, making sure to water down the paint so that my coats weren't too thick so that they didn't hide the details. I also painted the insides of the air intake flat black to simulate shading. I painted the fans for the engine and also the interior of the landing gear bay Tamiya XF16 flat aluminium, and using a fine brush I painted the seats, some of the side walls in the cockpit, and also some of the radar equipment with Tamiya XF51 khaki drab. The ejection handles were painted with a coat of Tamiya XF3 flat yellow, and a little bit of Tamiya X2 white was dabbed onto some of the raised details on the instrument panels, and a little bit of Tamiya XF52 flat earth was carefully painted onto the seat belts. The engine details received a wash of flat black before being glued to the air intakes and then these were glued to the fuselage halves before the halves were joined. I held the fuselage halves using some bulldog clips and masking tape while the halves bonded together and then moved on to assembling the tail boom structure. I had to use a nail file to sand some of the excess seam lines and remove the sprue off of the parts for the tail boom and then I used a sharp knife to rescore the panel lines before the parts were assembled. The tail assembly fitted together really well, so I then moved on to the wings. I decided to have my wings extended, but there was the option to have them folded up, and they included some nice parts with internal ribbing and structures for the wings. I simply assembled my wings by putting the halves together and joining them up to a spar piece which slid into the main part of the fuselage. The fit was alright, however there was a fair bit of cleanup needed between the fuselage and the joining section of the wings. However, once this was cleaned up, I simply held them in place while the glue bonded. The tail assemblies both fitted very nicely to the wings, and the elevator fitted in between the two of them. The elevator could have the option of being poseable, but I decided to simply glue it in place. I glued my flaps in the retracted position, however there is the option in this kit to have them extended. I used a bulldog clip to hold them in place while they dried. The fit was okay. I then moved on to assembling the landing gear and later the landing gear bay doors. Both the nose wheel and main wheels were very sturdy in design and fitted very nicely to the fuselage. After I sanded down the wheels to make them look a little bit weighted, I glued them to the landing gear struts and then I added on my air brake, however I didn't glue the air brake in place because I planned to add some weights in the nose section by using the air brake as a door. I did glue some of the finer pieces though to the model. I used a couple of metal weights in the air brake compartment and for the nose cone I added in some milliput and shaped it to fit the nose cone before I glued it in place. It probably comes as no surprise, but this kit is quite tail heavy. I would definitely recommend that unlike me, you uh, put some weights in the middle of the fuselage before you actually seal the halves together. I just barely managed to get away using the milliput in the nose and using the air brake compartment for the metal weights. 
I used some Vallejo water-based putty to fill in the gaps, mainly between the wings and the fuselage halves, which as I mentioned earlier did not fit quite well together, and also where the top and bottom fuselage halves joined, just to make sure that the join was nice and smooth and there was no giant unrealistic cracks. I gave the putty 24 hours to dry before I painted the first coat of the camouflage, which was Revell 05 Flat White. This was the first time I'd used the Ravel Aquacolor range, and I have to say I was quite impressed. The paint seemed to flow relatively easily, and uh, it formed a very nice and smooth uniform finish. I did around about four coats of both the two camouflage colors, the second one being on the upper surface of the aircraft, Ravel 74 Gunship Grey. As you may have guessed by the title Aquacolors, the Ravel paints were in fact water-based, just like the acrylics from Tamiya. As a result, you can use water to both clean the paint off the brush and also to help thin your paint so that your layers are nice and thin. After the second coat of both colours, I then got some Tamiya XF1 and thinned it with some water so that the paint would flow into the cracks of the model and the recesses and then I applied it all over the model. This was to help highlight surface detail and add a little bit of weathering. However, I later did another two coats of the previous colours to soften the effect. After leaving the flat wash to dry, I then applied two more coats of Ravel 74 and Ravel 5 before using a fine brush to help neaten up the camouflage and add a little bit more of the Ravel 74 on the leading edges of the wings. With the aircraft finally painted up, I then cut out the clear parts and painted the canopy frames in two coats of Ravel 74. Like the Tamiya water-based equivalents, you can easily scratch off any mistakes carefully using a sharpened piece of sprue or a cocktail stick. I painted the Glare Shield Tamiya XF1 flat black before gluing in place some of the canopy parts before moving on to the small decals in the kit. To apply the decals, I put the transfer paper in water and let that sit for a little bit before removing it and dabbing away the excess water. I then use either a fine brush or sometimes my fingers to slide it onto the model after I put a little bit of water into the place where the decals are going. The decals in this kit were very, very detailed. There are a lot of small ones and they had some very fine printing and detailing on them. Overall, the decals were of very good quality. The only major issues I had were with the walkway markings on the upper surface. The no walking zone strips were not in fact a rectangle with a clear film, but rather the individual red lines had been cut out of the film, which made them very frail and likely to tear, and a little bit prone to bending, but overall it reduced the risk of silvering, which made them of better quality. After applying all the common stencils, I then applied the main markings. I chose to do C Vixen XJ490 from 892nd Squadron the Ark Royal, which had the numbers 126 on the nose. I chose this particular aircraft because it is currently housed at the Queensland Air Museum where I do a little bit of volunteer work. Although the actual decals for XJ490 were not included in this kit, I managed to scrape a few extras to make the 6 on the nose and I painted the 4 on the XJ490. I applied a little bit of Tamiya decal adhesive onto the decals after they had been applied and then moved on to adding the chipping effects. Basically, I used a small brush and also on the upper surfaces of the wing a little bit of a sponge to apply some Tamiya XF16 flat aluminium onto the areas likely to receive chipping. These included the access panels and various moving parts such as the flaps and landing gear bay doors and also on the leading edges of the wing and the areas where the crew might walk, especially along the tail boom where the refueling would take place. But I took care not to apply it onto the areas such as the keep off markings where crew members would not walk. This technique for weathering is relatively easy, but you just have to be careful not to go overboard.
While I left the chipping to dry, I then moved on to assembling the rocket pods, the fuel tanks, and also the red top missiles. These were pretty nicely detailed, however the only thing I changed was on the missiles. I cut off the ends of the plastic missiles, which were hard plastic, and found some pieces of clear sprue and glued them on to make the infrared searching system. Otherwise, I simply painted them up and then glued them onto the model at a later date. For this model, I decided to experiment with a new method of weathering the aircraft. I got some Tamiya panel line ascent colour in the black form and then applied it onto some of the areas that would likely receive a lot of grease and grunge being built up and also just on a few of the panel lines to help highlight them. I also used a cotton bud to help streak the panel line as it was still drying. Because the panel line ascent colour is enamel, you can use some X20 Tamiya enamel thinners to help thin out any excess that you accidentally apply onto the model or to help create better streaks by thinning them out slowly. I found this technique very helpful, especially on the fuel ports where I'd apply some panel line ascent colour and then while it was drying, streak it back with one of the cotton buds, then I'd leave it to dry and then thin out the streak to make it nice and narrow so it looked like it was at a realistic scale. Since I'd used Revell acrylics, the enamel thinner will not affect the paint, which is good because it allows separate layers to be done without having to do any varnishing in between. If you did use enamel colours for your paint job, you will have to seal them off before you apply the panel line colour and the thinner. After the enamel wash had dried, I applied some Tamiya X27 Clear Red and Tamiya X25 Clear Green on both of the navigator lights before gluing on the weapons, and with that, the Sea Vixen was finally completed. And here we have the finished Sea Vixen. So uh, overall, I had a lot of fun doing this build. Um, it actually surprised me a bit. Uh, going into it, I thought it might be a little bit overpriced, uh, especially given the size of this aircraft and the size of the kit. But uh, as I built it, I found that the fit was really, really excellent. Um, with only like a couple of little things here and there, a little bit tricky to do, like uh, the fuel tank extensions were a little bit awkward. Um, but overall, really, it went together super well. Uh, the details are all very nice, all the recessed panel lines are good, um, and the cockpit details are nice, even though you don't see too much of them. Um, they're just, it's nice to have those little details there, and the uh, engine detailing is really quite good in this kit. Um, so I think it's engineered really quite well, there was only a little bit of clean up here and there to do, and uh, otherwise it was all good. Uh, clear parts are excellent, so uh, yeah, uh, it's definitely quite a complex kit though, um, and deceptively. It looks like it's going to be simple, but there's a lot of fiddly parts, especially with the uh, engine and the wings. Um, and then there's also, of course, a lot of uh, other little options, like you can have the uh, generator that's on the back here opened up. Uh, you can have the wings folded up, so uh, it's got all the uh, options you might want on a British naval aircraft. Nice that they include the paints in this set. Um, it's actually really quite hard. I don't think there's any hobby store that has the Revell aqu uh, Aqua Colour range that are included as the little starter pots. Um, so it's uh, really, really nice paint. I had no trouble with it at all. It's it's just as good as the Tamiya, if not a little bit better, um, in terms of how easy it is to apply and how easy it is to clean up. And uh, the accuracy of the color looks really good. I've seen a uh, few, we've got two Sea Vixen, uh, one complete and another no section at the Queensland Air Museum. So I can say it's, uh, it's pretty accurate uh, for all the um, features and the colors. Definitely a great little kit, and uh, it's quite a, uh, as I've mentioned, a very unique uh, looking aircraft of an era where uh, everyone's experimenting with fighter designs, so uh, it's really nice to have one available on the market. Um, so yeah, if you've had a bit of experience with model kits and want to give a go of something a little bit different, or you're a fan of British aviation, have a go at this one, it's a really good kit. Um, I wouldn't recommend this one for beginners because of the complexity of the, uh, the kit, but if you've got a few under your belt and uh, you're getting good, definitely recommend having a go. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to leave a like. And if you have any questions, comments, or even suggestions for what I could have done better or any future builds and that sort of stuff, be sure to leave them down in the comment section below. And a special shout out as always to my wonderful patrons, Archie Palmer, J&K Jones, Emo, and Joe Moss. Thank you so much for funding my videos. 
and uh, some exclusive content will be dropping this month for sure, so uh, stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, if you want to have access to videos a little bit early and also some extra voting perks and see some exclusive stuff, be sure to join my Patreon. And uh, this video was done, as always, in conjunction with Tectonic Hobbies, the local store on 447 Wises Road, Maruchidor, where if you uh, wish to build a sea vixen after watching this video, you can grab one. Uh, we should have them in stock as of the making of this video, and if not, we're more than happy to order them in if you come up to the front counter, or even give us a little phone call, or then send through an email. Otherwise, uh, until the next build video, take care, and model on.